muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. So before he's, before he's a working citizen, he's an actor. As a working citizen, he's an actor. As a retired worker, he's an actor. He's, he's just been there. He's been there through this entire period. He went the length and breadth of the province um, with his incredible personality and drive and knowledge and helped form this infrastructure, which in spite of things that have been done to discourage it through cutbacks and so on, is still there. He's always been very generous in giving his time to anyone to help out with anything like that. And I think his years in the government allowed him to help influence quite a few things. But pardon, gentles, all the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? I met at that time a Laura Mahan. Uh, she was the wife of the uh, man who ran the Edson Motor Company. And uh, she took us down our basement, a few kids, and that's where my life started. She taught me how to skate. She taught me the theater. I think I got my first pair of figure skates for about three dollars. And uh, I started to skate and I also, my sister was skating too. And so we used to do uh, pairs in ice shows uh, in many areas. And uh, it helped to pay the rent. In fact, uh, figure skating was the, uh, the way in which I got to university. I actually did a lot of uh, plays in studio theater when they first opened. Uh, it was in a play in 1950, 51, uh, with studio theater. And in fact, I did 19 plays with studio theater over the years. And uh, one thing led to another, and I was offered some wonderful roles and did over 50 plays in my lifetime. Generosity in acting is something that's pretty vital uh, to, uh, to doing good ensemble work. And I have found Walter, in the small times I performed with him, to be extremely generous in that respect, and yet commanding on the stage because of his own presence. And let our ciphers to this great account on your imaginary forces work. For tis your thoughts that now must deck our kings. Here he is by night showing what theater can do for people. And then by day he's, he's, he's at work and they're putting in, you know, weeks and weeks and years and years of work. Here he is selling politicians, selling the Alberta public on the idea of the arts, uh, selling the governments of the day on policies and procedures that will make the arts available all over the province. It never entered my head to think of him as being talented. I always liked him and we always went full tilt and I usually did the sets while he did the acting and it never entered my head to think, my goodness, he's good or he's bad. I just accepted him for what he was. In December of 1983, 
the Casa Theater opened. And I had the joy of being asked to play Lady Bracknell in Oscar Wilde's Importance of Being Earnest. Cassie got the chance to really uh, camp it up <laughs> and have fun um, and take the character. He's a very good character actor anyway. Um, uh, but in this one, he had the chance to go to stretch the limits. He, uh, he was part of a, of a community that really helped make theater an essential part of the Alberta cultural fabric. Well, he's built a lot of castles, hopefully not sand, hopefully not wa washed away. Someone said to me not long ago, when are you going to retire? <laughs> and I said, when I'm 149, that will give me one year to prepare. <laughs> Admit me, Chorus, to this history, who prologue like your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play.